Hello mga kabibis! Ay, sorry. Hindi ko pa channel yun. Hi everyone! This is Kitch Ejercito and welcome back to my channel. So, for two weeks, medyo hindi po ako nakapag-upload, no? As promised, sabi ko, dudugtungan ko agad yung exam tips number one. Kaya lang, meron tayong mga unforeseen circumstances this past few weeks na syempre, uh, medyo mas importante. Kailangan bigyan ng tutok. So, lalo na yung mga uh, nasalanta nating mga kababayan, kapatid, dito sa Cagayan, sa Bicol, etc. Sa iba pang parts ng, Fil ng Philippines. So, syempre, may shift ng focus papunta ron. Pero syempre, hindi ko nakakakalimutan yung commitment ko sa inyo para dun sa second part ng exam tips. <laughs> Excuse me po! <laughs> so, <laughs> so, kung isa po kayo sa nag-aabang dun sa part 2, kung isa po kayo sa nag-aabang dun sa part 2 ng law school exam tips ko, <laughs> So, kung isa po kayo sa nag-aabang sa part 2 ng law school exam tips ko, i-disclose ko na po sa inyo lahat ng tips in a while. Pero kung kayo naman ay bagong viewer lang sa aking videos, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bells for your um, updates. So, please, 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 if you need to watch law school tips, law school advice, lawyer experiences, etc. Minsan may mga kaartihan na nasisingit. Ito yung channel na para sa inyo. So, please, please do subscribe. Okay, so as mentioned earlier, this is already part 2 of the Law Exam Tips series. So if you haven't watched part 1 yet, um, I suggest you watch that first muna bago nyo panoorin to. So I will just link it down below and put it somewhere here sa taas, dito sa mga nag-clickable cards here on top. Para panoorin nyo muna yun bago to. Kasi sa first part, um, dun ko muna tinuro kung paano magbasa ng exam questions, bago paano mag-budget ng time. And, paano sumagot, paano dapat maganda yung sulat, paano yung margins, etc. So, nandun muna yung mga ano eh. Hindi pa yung content. So, ano pa lang, format ng pagsagot. So, yun yung nasa part 1. So, dito na tayo ngayon sa part 2. Um, this will deal with the substance of your answers or your structure of your answers. So, if you haven't seen that yet, I suggest you watch it first before watching this video. But, still, um, both are um, important. So, in this video, um, I will teach you how to structure your answers based on um, yung mga suggested answers sa mga previous bar exams. And um, tuturuan ko kayong sumagot depende sa kung ano yung exam type na pinapakita. Kasi usually sa midterms, finals, and sa bar exams, may mga different types of questions dyan. So, meron tayong may questions um, asking you to differentiate or meron din questions asking you to define things. Uh, meron din um, questions on um, hypothetical questions or meron din question on enumeration. So, may mga iba-ibang types ng exams. Minsan may true or false pa but that's very rare sa bar exams. Although sa midterms and finals may modify true or false. Pero yung all the, the rest, yung apat, kahit sa bar exams, lumalabas yan. So, differentiate, define, enumeration, and hypo questions. So, I will teach you how to answer those four types of questions. Okay, so first type, definition questions. So, usually, um, binibigay ang mga definition questions niyan during law school, midterms and final exams. Mahilig magpa-define yung mga profs natin ng mga um, legal terms or mga importanteng concepts na pinag-aralan natin sa first specific subject. Sa bar exams, lumalabas yung definition questions na yan sa mga first part ng exam. So, parang pampainit muna. So, they will ask you to define certain things, certain terms. At yun yung mga um, usual lang na nilalagay nila sa umpisa bago sila magtanong ng hypo questions. So, paano nyo ba sasagutin kapag binigyan kayo ng ganong klaseng tanong? Siyempre, ang pinaka-ideal ay memorize mo yung definition ng term na yun or ng concept na yun. Pero ano lang ba yung pwedeng mong legal basis para doon sa definition na yun? Siyempre, kailangan it must come from a law, specific law, jurisprudence, kung tax question man yan or tax term, pwede siguro sa isang revenue regulation or pwede rin principle of law lang siya kasi minsan hindi naman siya batas or hindi naman siya jurisprudence pero meron tayong mga concepts, lalo na halimbawa sa mga political law may mga concepts sa book, di ba, na um, accepted terms and accepted definitions na siya so kailangan pag nagde-define kayo as much as possible write your legal basis also so hindi lang nag-apply yun sa mga hypo Question. So, kailangan may legal basis pa rin yung sagot. 
but if you are not sure about your legal basis just um, put your definition as is just make sure na merong keywords doon sa definitions nyo okay, so minsan kasi diba it's very hard naman talaga to memorize yung exact definition pero ang nagmamatter kasi sa mga examiners dyan yung keywords so for example doon sa example natin sa labor um, just and authorized causes so ano ba yung keyword ng just cause usually fault based kapag just cause diba kapag hindi naman fault based yun yung mga authorized cause. So, kailangan lang mayroon kayong kabisadong keywords na yun yung talagang mailalagay nyo. So, kahit na hindi naman complete definition, for so long as there is the keyword, may points na yun agad. Pero, of course, syempre, it's very ideal that you memorize the entire definition of the, these terms and you put your legal basis. Again, if you're not sure about your legal basis, wag nyo nang ilagay. For the second type of exam questions, that would be yung mga differentiate certain terms. So, differentiate this from this. So, for example, um, differentiate mala in say from mala prohibita. So, kapag may mga ganyang klaseng tanong, your professor or the examiner is not asking you to define or simply define what is mala in say or mala prohibita. Kasi hindi yun tanong. Tinatanong niya, differentiate, meaning, ano yung pagkakapareho, ano yung pagkakaiba ng dalawang terms. So, kailangan meron kayo dyang subcategory. So, for example, na sa mala in say and mala prohibita natin na question, you can say, as to the nature, mala in se is, um, the act itself is evil in nature, while in mala prohibita, the act, in se, act itself is not evil per se, but it is prohibited by law. So, you can differentiate them further by saying, um, as to the defense of good faith, good faith is a defense, is a valid defense in mala in se, but it is not a defense in mala prohibita. So, parang ganun, meron ka pang mga subcategories kasi hindi ka lang nagde-define. So, pinapakita mo kung saan sila nagkakapareho o saan sila nagkakaiba. Usually, makita mo yung mga ganyang um, pag-differentiate sa mga reviewers, diba? sa mga mem-aid meron yan, pero naka-table format. Huwag na huwag niyong gagawin yan sa exam, ha? Na tipong gagawa kayo yung table dito ng mala in set, gagawa kayo yung table ng mala prohibita, tapos nakatabular form. That's a no-no. Kasi hindi naman ganun sumagot sa um, law question. So, you have to phrase it in a paragraph form. So, dapat hindi siya nakatabular form. Kailangan paragraph form pa rin siya na maayos. Pero, sinasabi niyo yung mga subcategories kung saan sila nagkakapareho at saan sila nagkakaiba. Again, you are not defining um, just to summarize, um, the professor examiner is not asking you to define. They're asking for the differences and similarities of, of the concepts in answer in a paragraph format and not in a tabular form. Okay. So, next question naman, next type of question ay yung enumeration questions. So, minsan nagpapa-enumerate ng mga requisites o kaya ng mga, or kung ano man. For example, um, enumerate the aggravating circumstances or enumerate the mitigating circumstances. So, kapag ganyan yung question, um, kailangan, of course, meron kang legal basis. So, paano mo ilalagay legal basis? Siyempre, lagay mo sana, ideally, yung article number and yung... RPC, Revised Penal Code, for example. But, yun nga, katulad ng sinabi ko kanina, if you're not 200% sure about the um, legal basis, don't put the article number anymore. Just say, according to the Revised Penal Code, the aggravating circumstances are as follows. Ganyan. So, kailangan may legal basis pa rin. When you answer enumeration questions, hindi lang siya dapat parang nakabullet format or parang naka-enumerate na um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 parang ganyan, hindi dapat ganun, kailangan nakaparagraph format pa rin siya, so dapat meron ka ng intro na ganun na, according to the revised penal code, the uh, aggravating circumstances are as follows, tapos nakasunod-sunod siya, pero hindi ka basta-basta sasagot ng 1, 2, 3 well, hindi pwedeng ganun yung pagsagot kasi that's not very lawyerly, you know, so dapat hindi kailangan lahat ng answers nyo kahit na enumeration questions pa yan ay nakaparagraph format Okay, so for the last type of exam questions, ito yung hypothetical question. So, ito yung pinaka-common, syempre. Yung mga nasabi ko sa umpisa, usually mga pampainit lang yan ang exam. Pero yung hypo questions, yung may mga greater weight in terms of the um, value ng grade mo. And dito talaga sinusukat kung naintindihan mo ba o hindi. Kasi this is an application na already of the concepts that you've learned during the law school. So... Paano ba sumagot ng hypothetical question? So, nasabi ko na to sa video ko noon, doon sa mga practical law, law school tips ko, na ililink ko na lang din sa baba kung hindi nyo pa napapanood. Um, pero dito, I will discuss it to you 
ng mas detalyado. Ito yung pinakamahalagang type of exam questions and the most common sa bar exam. So, hypo questions. So, how do you answer hypo questions? Ang format na ginagamit ko ay yung ABC sa um, hypothetical questions. So, that is answer, basis, conclusion. Some of the um, baristas or mga lawyers na ngayon na, na previous na nag-bar exam, four paragraphs yung ginagamit nila. Pwede rin naman yun, pero ako kasi ay use talaga yung ABC format since mas maikli siya, mas straight to the point, and mas, dahil mas maikli, mas marami kang time. So, hindi kasi ako nahirapan in terms of um, time management during the bar because ang ikli ng mga sagot ko, as in like three paragraphs lang, tapos ABC format lang talagang ginamit ko. So, wala na talaga siyang paligoy-ligoy. Kaya hindi ako masyadong natagalan sa pagsagot. At dahil maikli yung sagot ko, mas malaki yung sulat ko, mas maganda siya tignan sa paper. Okay, so, paano nga ba yung ABC? So, that is answer, basis, conclusion. So, paano mo sinasagot yung tanong? So, pag may hypo question, usually sa dulo niyan, ang tanong dyan, answerable by yes or no, or sabihin niya na, is the petition meritorious, or if you were the judge, will you grant the petition, or if you were the judge, how will you rule? Ganyan yung mga tanong. So, kailangan dun sa answer part, so sa first paragraph mo, you just have to say yes or no, or the petition is meritorious, or the petition is without merit, or pwede rin kung um, sinabi sa'yo, if you were the judge, ganyan, ganyan, I will grant the petition, or I will deny the petition. So, yun lang yung first paragraph. As in, ganun lang siya ka-straight to the point. So, ibig sabihin, yung first paragraph nyo is just a one-liner directly answering the question. So, hindi na kailangan ng paligoy-ligoy sa sagot. So, minsan kasi, yung mga examiners, tinitignan muna nila kung tama ba o mali yung sagot mo dun pa lang sa answer part. Kasi kapag hindi, tama, hindi na nila tutuloy. So, kailangan malinaw na agad sa'yo ano ba yung sagot mo. Kasi kapag may paligoy-ligoy ka sa umpisa, kasi hindi mahanap nung examiner kung anong sagot mo, lalong walang points na binibigay kasi parang parang mo silang inuuto na wala ka namang sagot. Ang dami mong koda, wala ka namang sagot. So, kailangan straight to the point yung first paragraph. Okay, so after answering or giving your direct to the point answer in the first paragraph, ano ba yung lalagay mo sa second paragraph? So, your second paragraph is your legal basis. So, that's letter B. So, answer basis conclusion. So, paulit-ulit ko siya sasabihin na para hindi niyo makalimutan. So, B is your basis. So, what are the legal basis na pwede mong isight? So, of course, law, jurisprudence, um, waiting ko sa tax, pwede mga revenue regulations, pwede yung principles of law, pwede yung statutory construction principles, yung mga Latin maxim, etc. And legally accepted concepts. Okay, so yun yung mga pwede mong isight as um, basis. So, paano ba kayo nagsasight ng legal basis? So, di ba, sinabi ko na nga na may iba-ibang um, pwedeng isight as legal basis. For, for example, muna, pumunta muna tayo sa law. So, for example, meron kang specific law na gusto ng isight. Um, let's say, um, RA 3019 or the Graft and Practices Act. So, kung alam mong yung RA number, ilagay mo yung RA numbers according to Republic Act 3019, blah, blah, blah. Kung hindi ka sure doon sa Republic Act number, huwag mo na ilagay yung Republic Act number kasi baka mamaya tama yung law mo tapos mali naman yung Republic Act number. So, parang nagkamali ka pa. So, kung hindi ka sure doon sa RA number, just don't put the RA number. Just say, according to the Graft and Corrupt Practices Act, ganyan. Next point is, don't cite the section number or the article number if you're not 200% sure also. Halimbawa nga sa CRIM, isa-cite mo sana yung aggravating circumstances dun sa um, scenario. Huwag mo na isa-cite yung article number kung hindi mo naman sure kung ano yung article number at anong specific provision. Like, anong article number in letter. Kasi minsan may mga sub- letters pa, ba? So, kung hindi ka sure, wag mo na isa. Just say, according to the revised penal code, etc. etc. So, kailangan 200% sure ka doon sa citation bago mo siya isa. Otherwise, just say, itong loan na to. Pero wag ka na maglagay ng specifics kasi baka doon ka pa magkamali. Okay, so yan yung sa law. Next ay sa jurisprudence. So, mga cases. So, in terms of citing jurisprudence naman, um, you can cite jurisprudence yung case mismo if you're 200% sure also with the GR number and the promulgation date of the case. Especially if yung case ay masyadong generic yung title. Like, for example, Reyes versus Court of Appeals. Diba, minsan may paulit-ulit na parang nagkakamali pa tayo minsan sa pag-digest kasi kala mo yun yun. Ibang kaso pala kasi sobrang generic nung title. 
So usually talaga kailangan nagsasayad tayo ng GR number and um, date. Pero siyempre sobrang hirap gawin nun. So just state the title of the case if it's a landmark case. So kung hindi naman siya landmark case, huwag mo nang ilagay yung case title kasi baka nagkamali ka pa kasi minsan may mga pare-pareho nga ng case title. Unless you are 200% sure again of the GR number and the promulgation date of that case. Kapag yung mga landmark cases, pwede mo man naman siyang isight kahit na wala ng GR number or promulgation date kasi landmark cases nga sila. Pero kung hindi naman, just say na according to a case decided by the Supreme Court or according to jurisprudence, ganyan. Huwag nyo nang kayo magmabida ng pagsasayat ng kaso. Yun. So, tandaan nyo yun. Huwag masyadong magbabida, okay? Of course, lastly, huwag din kayo magpula ng legal basis. Kasi baka mamaya, porkit wala kang legal basis, naglagay ka na lang ng kung ano-ano. So, kung inibento mo na yung sagot mo, huwag ka na magsayat pa ng kung ano-ano. So, baka lalo lang magkamali, di ba? Pero yun nga, um, make sure na you have a legal basis sa answer kasi doon nagmamatter yung um, sagot. Yun talaga yung tinitignan na ano ba yung basis mo. Kasi minsan, dalaman talaga as lawyers, of course, we know na yung mga hypo questions, minsan marami talaga siyang possible answers. It depends upon your legal basis kung paano mo siya pinush, paano mo siya defend Doon sa examiner, so minsan kahit magkaiba kayo ng sagot ng examiner, uh, may points pa rin yung sagot nyo kung tama yung legal basis. Kaya napansin nyo, ba sa mga answer key ng bar exam, hindi naman talaga siya correct or these are the correct answers. Means, ang nakalagay lang suggested answers, ganyan. Kasi, pwede naman kasi talagang magkaroon ng pagkakataon na maraming possible answers depending on your legal basis. So, maaring meron kang naisip na legal basis na hindi naisip na examiner pero dahil maganda yung pagka-defend mo at mukhang valid pa rin naman yung argument mo, may points pa rin yun. So, make sure that you are um, laying down your legal basis of your answers. Kasi syempre, kailangan ma-defend mo yung sagot mo sa first paragraph and ano yung legal basis mo sa second paragraph. So, again, A, B, C, answer, basis, conclusion. Okay, so your last paragraph will be your conclusion. So, in your conclusion, you will reconcile the legal basis and the facts given in the case. So, for example, applying the law in the case at bar, then A is liable. Parang ganyan. So, ganun lang ka siya kasimple. So, yung iba, ginagawa nilang four paragraphs. Pero, practically, actually, parang pareho lang naman kasi um, answer basis, tapos yung kung ano yung facts ng case ngayon dito, tapos conclusion, ganun yung ginagawa nila. So, yung akin, parang nakamerge lang yung third and fourth paragraph para lang mas maging mas maikli siya and straight to the point. Ganun lang siya kaikli. So, A, B, C. So, tatandaan nyo yun. Um, be straight to the point. Don't make paligoy-ligoy kasi it doesn't help. And always cite your legal basis. Kasi minsan, kahit magkaiba nga kayo nasagot ng examiner, for so long as you were able to defend your answer, you will be given um, certain points pa din with your um, answer. So, good luck sa inyong exams! Don't forget the ABCs in answering your hypothetical questions because that's very important. Okay, so good luck po sa lahat ng mga exams. I think some of you will be having final exams this December. So, good luck po sa mga hindi pa mag-exams dahil medyo na-delay yung school calendar. I hope this helps you in your future exams, in your finals, maybe in January. So, please watch this alongside with my first video on this topic, on the same topic para mas ma-fully appreciate nyo yung tips na binigay ko today. So, maraming maraming salamat po. This has been Cage Ejercito. Happy Aral! Bye! Sa mga hindi pa nakakapag-subscribe, please subscribe po. Maraming salamat po. Thanks!